Now, I, I'm interested in, in your opinion on you know, working with leaders and decision makers, those who really do carry the responsibility of a business or a brand directly on their shoulders, or at least it might feel like that to them. How, how are some of those things that we've just talked about different for them compared with the teams they might manage or the yeah. individuals they might you know, come into contact with? What, what is their burden like and what kind of strategies could they use to fight the same kind of thing? So in leadership, we're always managing polarities. And in, you know, in business terms, that could be uh, speed and quality. It might be sustainability and price. In 2020 and 2021, it has been revenue and well-being. Those things weren't historically at odds with each other, but they are at odds with each mm. other now. And on top of, so, so leaders are managing polarities all of the time, which is a challenge, right? Then on top of that, they are also sandwiched between the demands of the business and the needs of their people, which is another polarity that they that they need to try and manage. Mm. And I think the first thing is to acknowledge that these things, these polarities aren't there to be solved. They are there to be managed, right? They're, well, it's, it's, a, it's a constant uh, effort really to try and get the balance right. And sometimes it will shift one way and sometimes it will shift the other way. And the reason why I say that is actually to absolve leaders of trying to find the answer and trying to to um, solve it because it's not to be solved, it's to be managed. Mm. Um, and then the other thing I would say is leadership can be quite solitary because you feel that you need to know the way, need to have a clear vision, need to rally the team, need to make hard decisions and and um, be kind of passed down different briefs and different challenges that you might know that your team aren't going to be happy with. Um, you're trying to deal with the team's sense of uh, well-being being eroded and at the same time um, still deliver for the business. And so what we called for certainly at the beginning of last year and continue to to call for it is honesty that you don't need to be the hero you don't need to pretend mm. that you've got this all worked out actually it's far better for your team to hear about your challenges and your struggles and there's a number of reasons for that one is a it, it just makes you human and authentic it it B, it helps with connection and C, it gives your team permission to also not be okay. And that was one of the biggest things that we've been sharing through the last year and a half. And I keep thinking, okay, that's an old message now, it's no longer relevant, but it's still relevant, which is it's okay not to be okay. We are not yeah. working from home. We are working through a pandemic, trying to look after our families, trying to do and be all of the things we need to be. Mm. And we happen to be at home, which is a good thing for some people and a disastrous thing for other people. So helping people acknowledge that I, I, what I don't want is what is already happening, which is this acceptance of, okay, well, we're all at home and we just have to get on with it. No, we're still we're still in a pandemic with all the limitations and challenges that that has brought. And the fact that many of us who are haven't seen our families in a long time and, you know, we're, because it's such a global workforce, people are living in different countries. And, you know, the re, yeah. the re, and what we were talking about earlier, people are working 13, 14, 15 hour days because they can't switch off because they don't have the tools to set the lines and because they feel guilty. Um, so there's lots of stuff going on and we need to talk about it. We need to be open and honest about it. And it's okay not to be okay. 